Hey there, safe crackers. Get your combinations ready because it's time for the Comic Vault. Today, on the Comic Vault, we have for you a four issue series that took place in the middle of Wolverine, sent to us by one of our awesome viewers, whose name I forget currently, but please leave a message and tell me if you're that person. I applaud you. Thank you for sending these to me. Uh, issues 62 through 65 of Wolverine. And the subtitle is Get Mystique. So Wolverine, Get Mystique, issues 62 through 65 of Wolverine. I, hmm. Uh, it's written by Jason Aaron, and it's drawn by Ron Garney. The art is very pretty. Uh, I really like the art. I, I don't have a lot to say about it, other than I just think it's really a really well-drawn comic. Uh, the This is taking place on the tail end of Mystique really... Uh, screwing over the the X-Men. She she does something that, and I, I don't really remember what it is, I believe that you probably had to have read Wolverine 61 to know what's happening now, but uh, essentially she has done something that's that uh, the X-Men, particularly Wolverine, find unforgivable. In fact, Cyclops tells Wolverine that he's supposed to get a team and go hunt her down, and Wolverine says, I will do better on my own. So he hunts her around the world and tracks her down. So that's not really the interesting part of the story. Uh, Wolverine seems to take this really personally, and uh, it seems kind of strange as to why he's so super hyped up about this particular uh, transgression. She is a person who has been a villain. She, she has worked for Magneto. She's obviously done things to the X-Men in the past that are worse than just betraying them. Uh, so, my point is that why does Wolverine care so much? Well, the plot line of Wolverine tracking down Mystique is juggled with some history. Now, to address something that's really cool about the modern plot line, I don't want you guys to go away thinking that uh, I don't like what's happening in the here and now. I just think the history is more interesting. The, uh, the thing that's happening in the here and now that's really interesting is that Mystique is very clever about how she evades Wolverine. Uh, she will set up a precedent for people to want to destroy Wolverine in the town that she's going to. Uh, she'll... She's just very deadly, and she doesn't necessarily have to be the one who is the conveyor of death. I think that's really interesting. The thing that's happening in the past is what really justifies Wolverine's reaction to the present. Uh, because uh, Wolverine has his healing factor, he can... He, he looks young and lives much longer than what you would expect. So I think this was set in the 20s, I think that's what they said. I think... I'm not going to look for it. It's set back in the day. In fact, if you can see the wanted poster, it's a very old style, old style wanted poster. So, uh, what I think is significant about the past is that uh, they cross paths, and essentially, Wolverine joins Mystique's gang, not exactly by choice, but he's given the opportunity to join the gang. Uh, this, this. I'll call them uh, an extremely effective group of thieves, and but they're extremely effective on the small time scale. So uh, on the small scale, I guess I don't need the word time. Uh, they're small timers on the small time scale. But Wolverine is what makes the history so interesting is that Wolverine is given an opportunity for change. Now in the current line, in, or excuse me, in the modern part of this, the, the uh, well, the non-historical part, <laughs> Mystique has already had her opportunity for change, and she chose not to do it. That took place before the issue even started. Uh, she's not the protagonist, so it doesn't really matter, but I just like the idea that it exists somewhere. Uh, so knowing that she was trying to help the X-Men and then chose not to, or chose to betray them, is where, where we see that she had an opportunity for change, chose not to, and now we have her punishment. Wolverine won't give her a second chance here because uh, he believes she's had a second chance already, and uh, very much so has. 
I wanted more history. In fact, I would not mind seeing Jason Aaron write a, uh, a history of Wolverine and Mystique. I think that'd be kind of cool. Uh, set it back, because Mystique has her ability to change appearance, she can obviously regenerate cells and is therefore much older than she looks. Uh, Wolverine is very much the same way, uh, just for different reasons. So they have this history that takes place in history, which I find fascinating. Uh, there are some parallels drawn between Wolverine and Mystique that uh, I think are what make what really ties the modern plot line and the historical plot line together. But uh, so they have some history where Mystique can draw parallels between herself and Wolverine as being a traitor, and. Uh, Mystique will blame Wolverine for things, Wolverine will blame Mystique for things. And really, what it comes down to is an issue of right and wrong. Uh, who is in the right, who is in the wrong. And it's not necessarily like socially right and wrong, but morally right and wrong. Uh, I have a nitpick that I want to say about this. Uh, in the last issue, Wolverine, or excuse me, Wolverine, that'd be trippy. But uh, in the last issue, Mystique strips naked. <laughs> and uh, you don't see anything, guys, so the, it's all censored. Uh, but uh, she strips naked to fight Wolverine in the last issue. That I find troubling. I find it not troubling that she does it, but how it's handled. Uh, first of all, this is not an adult title. So every scene is somebody, or the, the Ron Garney, the artist, is trying to find a way to cover up things that cannot be shown in a censored comic. Fair enough. I understand, but then that means that there are these strange bits of dust in the air that are that are kicked up, and that it seems. But even less than that, I as soon as I saw that she stripped naked, I thought there was going to be some really bizarre shadows that were covering things up because it's in the middle of the day in the desert. There's sun. What are you going to do? So I was going to think. I thought there was going to be lots and lots of bizarre dust clouds being kicked up and bizarre dust or dust, uh, bizarre shadows being shadowed over things that they can't show. But what I really saw was too many panels where she was holding her gun specially and to where she was very covered up. But what that led to is her covering things up, and it looked like she was covering things up. And in my mind, if you are going to strip naked to fight someone just to prove how effective of a, how effective of a fighter you really are, why do you spend the entire time covering yourself? Because you obviously, like, why do you care if he sees you naked if you are, if you voluntarily chose to be naked? She could have given herself some kind of scale armor. Uh, she could have given herself effectively anything. Uh, the only thing that I can really figure out, the reason that she would strip naked, is that uh, she wants to show Wolverine that, well, one, it reminds the reader that this is a person who can regenerate cells, uh, and uh, so does Wolverine. She wants Wolverine to know that she's confident enough to beat him, or at least that she's confident enough to hold her own, uh, with or without clothing. So it's sort of a she will make herself look more vulnerable in order to uh, seem more effective, if that makes sense. But uh, to some extent, it, the other thing that I can figure out, that I could think of, is that she's trying to distract Wolverine and make it easier for her to beat him. Uh, that I find questionable. I don't think that's necessarily something that Wolver Wolverine's not the easily distracted type. He has history with her. He's angry at her. It's not like he has feelings for her. Uh, it was more of a, uh, a boss-goon relationship, relationship that they had, or maybe even equal to equal, but it was never a love type of thing. Well, maybe, maybe it was at one point, but it's, he definitely doesn't hold those feelings now. Flashbacks are handled well within this issue. We juggle the history with the modern day very well. So good job, Jason Aaron. I enjoyed your issue, and I liked your history quite a lot. Or I liked the, the, the history part quite a lot. And uh, your history part made your, your, uh, your modern day part very interesting. But I always resist to some extent. I resist flashbacks. Now, this story, considering that we have an established continuity, this story has to be written the way that it is. So I'm not really complaining about uh, Jason Aaron's ability to write. All I'm saying is that uh, I kind of wish that we could have had something a little bit more 
uh, organic beginning to end as opposed to something that had to be mixed together in order for us to understand it and really appreciate what's going on. So uh, I think it's a well-written series. I think it's good. Uh, I don't necessarily think that this is the best thing that's come out from Jason Aaron, but I do think it's worth picking up. So guys, if you're interested, if you like Jason Aaron, a KC writer, I totally support KC writers. So if you guys like Jason Aaron's work, I think you'll like this. And uh, actually, if you guys like Wolverine, I think you'll like this. So issue 62 through 65 of Wolverine, subtitled Get Mystique. Thanks for watching the Comic Vault. Now the Comic Vault, vast and ominous, uh, can be donated to, if and you so choose, it can be donated to uh, if you have things you want to get rid of, if you have things that uh, you want us to read, if you have things that you want us to review. Uh, please feel free to send things to Geekvolution P.O. Box 14183, Lenexa, Kansas, 66285. It doesn't have to be just comics, but we prefer if they're not perishables. So, thanks for watching the Comic Vault, guys. I'm Vince. This is Geekvolution. We'll catch you next time.